Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. So we are just going to wait for the others a couple of minutes because um, this is the last session. So we are going to um, just make like or, or to say the goodbye for this course. So, so we are going to wait for the others to come to be complete with this uh, module because it is the last day of this pre-intermediate English level. So we are going to like have the last couple of uh, topics that we are going to develop today. And then we are going to be free for a couple of, of days, I guess. So we're going to wait for the others to come to begin with the explanation of the, the topic because we were talking about the past and the different uh, forms of the past. So we have two more um, topics to complete. That is the past perfect and the past perfect continue. Well, we're going to begin. So um, I hope the others can come to the meeting uh, before it ends, because it, it is, I was saying um, that it is the last day or the last session that we're going to have in this month. So we are finally at the end of this course and we are going to move to the other a level that in this case is, I guess, um, I don't know if it's continue being a pre-intermediate or if it's going to be um, just intermediate. But in this case, we're going to have like some specific topics in which you need to think about different elements that you are going to use to communicate with the others. Um, and in this course, we were like seeing some vocabularies, seeing some uh, grammatical uh, structure. And in the other uh, courses, you are going to apply that knowledge, that information to complete or to express or to explain your ideas about a specific topic. So in this case, we are just going to continue with the topic that we had for um, this day. And we are going to see what is this about. Uh, I have two parts. That is the past perfect and the past perfect continuous. And in this case, um, we are going to have very short topics. Son temas bastante cortos. En este caso, el pasado perfecto solo tiene un uso para su... Um, 
de un, un, uh, un uso de aplicación, una forma de aplicación, y that's it. So it is a very, very short um, information that we have about the past perfect. And then we are going to see what is the past perfect continue. And we are going to have two activities for the last one. Vamos a entender dos actividades para el último, que es el, el past perfect y el past continue. Or in this case, let me see, let me check, let me check. Oh, we're going to have one and I'm going to eh, send to you another video. Vamos a utilizar un video, pero en este caso no lo vamos a ver en este momento, sino que va a ser para que ustedes eh, lo puedan hacer luego, porque es un video en el cual eh, vamos a ver, bueno, es como un juego, ¿verdad? Está como en un um, talk show o un game show, es como un, en un show de, de juego o en el cual... Um, ellos están hablando sobre el past perfect. Están hablando sobre esa estructura y lo que van a hacer es que ustedes básicamente van a ir al mismo tiempo um, dando las respuestas. Ahí se les va a estar preguntando o eh, poniendo unas oraciones y ustedes lo que van a hacer es al mismo tiempo que las personas que están en el video Ustedes pueden responder eh, las, eh, o ordenar las oraciones. Y ahí, pues, ustedes van a ir viendo cómo están, ¿verdad? En el, en el uso de esta estructura. So, but in that case, it's just like a, a, a practice. In this case, we're going to take this as a practice. But um, just give me a, a second because um, uh, I see I see blood here, so I think I have something here. Just give me a moment. Oh. Okay, in this case, we're going to see what is the past perfect about. And I, as I was saying, um, it is very, very short because we just have one, um, like just one use for this one. Okay, we're going to see first what is the form or the structure that we have for the past perfect, but I, I'm, I'm not have this one. Okay. Mm, okay, past perfect. And we have the form. So in this case, to complete this um, form or this structure, we make the past perfect by using the auxiliary had plus past participle.
Ayer estuvimos viendo como una comparación de esta parte en la que veíamos, ¿verdad? El uso de lo que es eh, los auxiliares en el caso del presente. Um, veíamos que tenemos esa estructura, ¿verdad? Con el have, pero en este caso eh, con el... Para, bueno, básicamente cuando hablamos de lo que son los auxiliares, sabemos que el auxiliar nos sirve para determinar en qué momento, ¿verdad? Del tiempo estoy utilizando yo mi oración. And in this case, um, it's just to make sure that we are in a specific topic or in a specific tense and the other person that is listening to us um, is knowing in which um, tense we are in that moment. El uso del, del auxiliar, básicamente, ¿verdad? Sabemos que el auxiliar lo que hace es um, demostrar en qué tiempo nosotros estamos funcionando o en qué tiempo estamos explicando las cosas. Eh, y en este caso, pues con el pasado es lo mismo. Nos está determinando a nosotros en qué momento del tiempo o en qué tiempo estamos nosotros haciendo nuestra oración. So in that case, we are going to use the auxiliary in past. But we have the past participle in the verb. That one Good is, night, teacher. Good night. It's not going to uh, change. Tell me. Teacher, uh, in this problem, in this moment, I go to the home. Don't worry. You can, um, usted se puede desconectar en este momento y si llega a casa a tiempo, se puede conectar. No se preocupe por eso. Okay, teacher. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I was saying that uh, we need, uh, we have the, the bear in this case in past, even in the present perfect. En el presente perfecto también tenemos ese verbo en pasado. Ahora, estamos simplemente cambiando el tiempo. Um, Pero básicamente lo único que vamos a cambiar nosotros es nuestra, eh, nuestro auxiliar. El verbo ya estaba en pasado. En este caso siempre va a quedar en pasado. No vamos a tocar nada de la estructura. Simplemente vamos a cambiar el auxiliar. And that's it. Now we are going to see the use. Because I was saying that we have just one use for this one. And it says, we use it when one action happens before another past action. Aquí, vamos a hacer eh, énfasis en esta parte. So I think it's, it's like eh, better for us to explain this part in Spanish. I know that we are in a pre-intermediate level and this is the last day of the course. And of course, we need to, to uh, talk in English and to listen in English and all this, that things. But the point here is if we understand better the information, it's going to be better for us when we apply this information in the future. Ahora, esta parte básicamente nos dice que eh, vamos a utilizar el pasado perfecto para hablar de una acción que sucedió antes de otra acción, pero que obviamente es una acción eh, pasada, ¿verdad? Yo tengo dos acciones, pero las dos acciones están... Eh, conectadas entre sí. Son dos acciones que yo estoy realizando, ¿verdad? Eh, juntas o que una tiene que ver con la otra. Y pues obviamente van a estar en el pasado, solo que eh, en este caso, one of the actions, va a estar, una de las acciones va a estar en pasado perfecto y la otra acción va a estar simplemente en pasado simple. 
but we are going to see what is this about because it's I don't know kind of a no es difícil, no es difícil sino que está un poco enredado. So in this case, let me close this one a uh, moment for a moment. Ah, okay, that is the video. So in the use, we use it when one action happens before another past action. And what is this about? What is this rule about? We have an example here. And it says, the film was, uh, I mean, had a start when we arrive. Ok, ahí tenemos nuestra eh, nuestra oración. La película había comenzado cuando llegamos. Entonces, estamos aplicando la eh, regla aquí, hard start. Tenemos el uso del auxiliar en pasado más el verbo y es obviamente pasado perfecto. Ahora, en la segunda acción, when we arrive, es en pasado simple. We arrived. And it says that um, we are going to use time expression. Vamos a utilizar time expressions. Before, by the time, and when. Para este tipo de acciones o para este tipo de oraciones en las que vamos a eh, hablar de dos acciones que tienen que ver entre sí, vamos a utilizar when o vamos a utilizar algunas time expressions that eh, let me explain that I am talking about two different actions in this case. Um, así como lo vemos en la oración que tenemos ahí. Cuando la película ya había iniciado, ¿qué pasó? Bueno, yo llegué o nosotros llegamos. Pero ahí estamos utilizando el when. The film have, had a start when we arrived. La película había comenzado cuando nosotros llegamos. It's the same thing as said, the film start before we, we arrive. Es lo mismo que decir, la película comenzó cuando llegamos with a simple form, but in this case, we're just applying the, um, the past perfect. Okay, in this case, we need to be very careful uh, of the overuse of past perfect. In this case, we need to remember that uh, this structure is only used for actions that happen before the main action. In este caso, no vamos a sobreusar el, eh, pasado, el pasado perfecto, ya que sabemos que esto solo se va a aplicar para acciones que eh, suceden antes que la acción principal. Okay, in this moment, I'm going to uh, send to you the video 
but uh, remember, this is just like um, a complement. Es un complemento de este, de este tema. This one. Es The Grammar Game Show. Es un, es un video del que les estaba hablando, en el cual eh, tenemos uh, dos participantes. We have two participants, and they are talking about the past perfect. And in this case, they have like... Um, They have like a different statements or different sentences in which they need to complete the uh, the part in which it is in past perfect. So in that case, they are going to um, like fix the uh, the statements, or they are going to um, how can I say it? They are going to correct the sentence, and that is the part in which you are going to use your knowledge. En el video, ellos van a corregir unas oraciones. ¿Qué van a hacer ustedes en ese momento? Cuando ustedes vean que está apareciendo esa parte de las oraciones, lo que van a hacer ustedes es pausar el video, leer la oración, y tratar de corregirlas antes de que aparezca la respuesta. Y ahí ustedes van a ir viendo si pues, eh, entendieron parte de lo que es el pasado perfecto o si saben cómo se aplica lo que es el pasado perfecto en las oraciones. Aparecen diferentes cosas, ¿verdad? Que vamos a tratar de corregir. But that is just a practice for you and you are going to do it later, lo van a hacer después, otro día, ustedes pueden guardar el video, abrirlo en YouTube, e inmediatamente eh, les va a aparecer luego. Because in this case, the, the information that we have about the past perfect is kind of, um, like kind of short. Now, we are going to talk about the next one. Okay. That is the past perfect continuous. This one is another one that is kind of uh, short. <sighs> that is the last one, past, con past perfect continuous, I'm sorry. So the form. We had plus been plus ing. Esa es la fórmula que nosotros vamos a utilizar para esta uh, estructura, ¿verdad? De el past perfect continuous. Vamos a utilizar, obviamente, el auxiliar had plus been. En ese caso, had been siempre va a ir en, este, en esta estructura. Y aquí, este ing, ustedes saben que se refiere al verbo. En this case, verb plus ing. Entonces, solo agregamos had been, nuestro verbo que se va a transformar a gerundio. Y that is the structure that we are going to use. So, in this case, the uses. And number one, because I think we have two, two different uses in this case. There are not a lot. In the number one, we use it to show that an action which started in the past continued up to another point in the past. Vamos a utilizarlo para mostrar que una acción inició en el pasado y continúa en otro punto, pero del mismo pasado. Pues son acciones que también tienen que ver, pero que quizás tienen una relación.
So let's see the examples. Good night. Okay, in this case we have, let me see. She had been living in Italy for three years when she lost her job. She was living, I mean, she had been in this case, not just was. She had been living in Italy for three years. When she lost her job. When she lost her job. Next one. I have been waiting. For 10 minutes. Before the bus came. By the time Steve arrived, I had been working for nearly eight hours. Okay, aquí tenemos los ejemplos. Y dice que eh, en este caso, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando de que vamos a mostrar que una acción que empezó en el pasado continúa, ¿verdad? Hacia otro punto en el mismo pasado. Ahora, ¿cómo es esto posible o de qué estamos hablando aquí? En the first example is that she had been living in Italy for three years when she lost her job. Ella había estado viviendo en Italia por tres años y aquí viene la otra parte, el otro punto de esa historia. Cuando ella perdió su trabajo. So in that case, we have one action in the past and now we have another, uh, another one happening in the past also. Next one, I had been waiting for 10 minutes before the bus came. Um, había estado esperando por 10 minutos cuando el bus apareció. Ya tenía 10 minutos, ya estaba realizando una acción y luego pasó otra. Que fue que el bus llegó al final. And the last one, by the time Steve arrived, para el tiempo, para el momento en el que Steve llegó, yo había estado trabajando por aproximadamente 8 horas. So that's why we're using this structure like this to have like two different actions that happen in the past that maybe has kind of relation with the things that we're saying. Now, the second one. With the past perfect, we use time expressions such as, um, okay. Such as for five hours, for two weeks, for a long time, but a time. This is not a rule that itself. So in this case, we are going to move this one. No es como una regla, sino que es una especificación de qué time expressions podemos utilizar. Ya luego les pongo la regla. So give me a moment. With the past, we use time expressions.
Okay, so in that case, we have these time expressions that we can use with this structure. Esas son las expresiones de tiempo que podemos utilizar con esta estructura. Now, we have the rule number two, and it says we can also use it to talk about the cause of something in the past. Lo vamos a utilizar para eh, hablar acerca de la causa de algo en el pasado. We have the examples. The first one, Susan was sweating because she had been running. Susan was... Is wedding because she had been running. And the next one, Henry was late because he had been Okay, estamos agregando, ¿verdad? Estamos hablando de la causa de nuestras acciones o de las acciones de las que estamos hablando. En el primer ejemplo, Susan was sweating. Esta es la parte que necesitamos explicar. Queremos explicar por qué Susan estaba sudando. Y aquí le agregamos, because she had been running. Porque ella había estado corriendo. So, in this case, this second part is like the explanation of the action. Or, in this case, is the cause of this action. Es la causa del por qué Susana o Susan estaba sudando. Ahora, Henry was late. Esta es lo que yo quiero explicar. ¿Por qué Henry llegó tarde? Because he had been studying. Porque había estado estudiando. Por eso fue que él llegó tarde. So in this case, I'm talking about the cause of these things. So in this case, we have completed the past topic or the past tense. Ese es el final del tema del pasado. Aquí tenemos dos eh, estructuras más. Ya completamos las cuatro. Ahora vamos a hacer una, un pequeño ejercicio. And in this case, give me a moment. I'm going to stop this one. Voy a colocar una imagen. And four questions. But give me a moment. because I need to copy this thing. Okay. Okay, this is the image. And we have four questions. We're going to test our knowledge about the topic of the past. In this case, we're going to like give the answer to the questions that we have there. Um, but you need to see the image. You need to, to analyze what are the elements that we have there. So in that case, you can like look into the image. I'm going to do it like a kind of bigger, like, like this, I, I guess. 
So we're going to answer the following questions. Where was this photo taken? Why was the man looking at the people in the background when the photo was taken? What had happened just before the photo was taken? Where had the man been going before the photo was taken? Vamos a especular, ¿verdad? ¿Cuáles son las respuestas a esas preguntas? O sea, nosotros podemos eh, agregar diferentes informaciones. Um, we can imagine different things in this case. Y para responder podemos utilizar los cuatro, las cuatro partes del past tense. Así que tenemos que responder, ¿dónde fue tomada esta foto? Eh, ¿Por qué el hombre estaba mirando a las personas que están atrás? Eh, next one. ¿Qué había pasado o qué pasó antes de que se tomara la fotografía? ¿Y a dónde estaba yendo el hombre eh, antes de que se tomara esa fotografía? So, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to see the image and to answer the question. Cuando ya tengan una respuesta a esas preguntas, ustedes las colocan en un solo mensaje, o sea, de una sola vez, en el chat. One, two, three, four, and that's it. Simple statements, oraciones cortas, ¿verdad? De lo que está pasando en esa imagen. Y las vamos a ir leyendo. Tenemos cinco minutos. It's 9.38, 39, I guess. It's almost 39. Um, we're going to see it in 9.44 or 9.45. 9.44, 9 we are going to write the answers on the chat, and then I'm going to read all the answers that you have about this photo. So let's check the image and answer the questions. Let's go.
de eh, answers. Vamos a empezar a escribir las... Uh, las, de, las cuatro, de las cuatro oraciones, Paul. Yes, of the four questions. Uh, yo solo he puesto una. No, no te preocupes, you can write the other one. Ok. No, pero igual, ya ahorita rápido saco la tarjeta. Ok, very good. Okay, we have a, some answers here. We are going to read the first answers that we have on the chat. Uh, for the first question, where was this photo taken? It says this photo was taken. Remember that we are using a past. Was taken in a hospital, okay? Number two, why was the man looking at the people in the background where the photo was taken? It says the man looked um, any or various uh, patients familiars. Uh, number three, what had happened just before the, the photo was taken? Um, it says this hospital before it didn't have an emergency. And in this time it's, I guess it is talking about an emergency. And number four, where had the men been going before the photo was taken? The men stayed out in the lab on the left side. Okay, thank you. We have another uh, answer for the first question. It was taken in a hallway of the hospital. Okay, so in this case, we're going to end the activity with those answers, I guess. If you have some uh, answers to put in the chat, you can do it already, but um, we are going to continue. Uh, the photo was taken in a clinic, okay. In this case, um, we have like 10 minutes. We have a couple of minutes to complete this session. We are almost at the end of this. Um, this day we can say, and I was, or we are complete with the topic of the past. So we are going to take these 10 minutes that we have left to talk about the future. Um, we are going to see uh, some elements about the, the future uh, time or the future chance. Um, I'm just going to show you uh, some things about the future. We are not like a uh, go deep in the topic, but in this case it's necessary that we have uh, some ideas about what is the future and what are the, the tenses that we have because we were talking about the present and also the past. 
but we didn't talk about uh, the future. And you know, that is a tense that is important because we are going to talk about the activities that we are going to do in the future. Ya hemos hablado del pasado, del presente, y vamos a tratar de dar como un pequeño feedback de qué es el tiempo futuro o qué elementos podemos encontrar en ese tema. Esto es como aparte, ¿verdad? Del tema principal, but it is like a review or something um related to the tenses that we are learning in English. We have another example. Tenemos otro ejemplo. And it says, he was seeing the people because there is the exit. Oh, está viendo las personas porque ahí estaba la salida y él tal vez estaba buscando la salida. Very good. Okay, uh, for the future tense, uh, just like in past and present, uh, there is um, more than one future tense in English. This change depending on the function and what we want to say. Um, in this case, it's related to the things that we want to express in future. So it is related to the actions that we are going to perform in the future. Cuando estamos hablando del futuro, son dependiendo, ¿verdad? De las acciones que queramos realizar o de las cosas que queramos decir en el futuro o que tiene que ver con el futuro. Um, pero básicamente son varias estructuras, así como en el pasado y en el presente. And in this case, we are going to learn about the future simple, future continuous, future perfect, and future perfect continuous. In some cases, it is like uh, when we are talking about future, we don't have like um or we don't see all these uh, parts because uh we are going to make like very simple it says he looked back because uh he thought they were speaking to him okay él volvió a ver verdad él está viendo las personas porque pensó que lo llamaba very good so in the future simple um we are going to talk about a the time later than now and can be used in lots of different ways. When we are talking about or when we are using this uh, future simple, we are talking about um, things that we are going to do later. And also we are going to use different ways. Estamos hablando de acciones que vamos a eh, realizar en el futuro, o sea, tiempo más adelante y se puede utilizar de diferentes eh, formas. And in the forms we have, it is made up of the verb will, want, plus space infinity. Para eh, utilizar esta estructura vamos a utilizar lo que es will or want. El want básicamente es el negativo, ¿no? Will not. Y vamos a utilizar una base infinitiva. El verbo en base infinitiva es aquel verbo que está en su forma base, o sea, que no tiene eh, alteraciones, pero que no lleva el to. Porque nosotros sabemos que hay verbos de forma base que llevan to to read, to eat, to fly, to jump. Pero en este caso simplemente vamos a utilizar eat, jump, fly, sing, eat. Esa forma del verbo. Um, because will is a modal verb, it doesn't change depending on the person doing the action. Ya lo hemos visto con otros auxiliares. Eh, cuando tenemos los auxiliares, 
no va a cambiar, ¿verdad? No importa la persona que estemos utilizando, ya sea singular, plural, tercera persona, el auxiliar no cambia de forma. Entonces, yo voy a utilizar I will, you will, he will, she will, it will. Y no vamos a cambiar, no tiene como una forma específica, ¿verdad? O, o un arreglo cuando es tercera persona. Eh, we can use contractions. Podemos utilizar contracciones también con el will. Of course. I will. Lo contractamos a I'll. El, la I apóstrofe LL. I'll. In the negative, we can also use will not for more emphasis or we can use won't, que es el que ya les decía. Won't es lo mismo que decir will not, pero es como una contracción del will not. Um, won't is more common in speech. Es más común hacerlo en, el, en la forma hablada eh, que en la forma escrita. Ya sabemos que para la forma escrita tenemos que ser eh, más formales. En la forma hablada, pues, we can use like eh, different contractions in this case. But it is not when we are talking in a formal way. Cuando estamos hablando con alguien profesional, no vamos a utilizar el want, sino will not. Um, and that's the information for the present um, simple. But what are the uses or what are the uses for the future simple? In this case, when we are using the future simple, we can use it for instant or spontaneous decision. Cuando vamos a tomar una decisión o, por ejemplo, nosotros estamos en nuestro día a día y tomamos una decisión espontánea, en ese caso, pues nosotros vamos a utilizar will. ¿Por qué? Porque es algo que no ha sido pensado eh, cuidadosamente. Por ejemplo, yo estoy trabajando en outset. I'm hungry. Estoy hambrienta. Como yo estoy hambrienta, I'm going to think about something that I can eat in that moment. I am hungry. I think I will make a sandwich. Tengo hambre. Creo que me voy a hacer un sandwich. ¿Lo pensé? Mm -mm. No pensé tanto, ¿verdad? Mi opción. No es como que eh, hoy por la noche I decide that I need to cook something for my breakfast. Or for the lunch. And I said, ah, I need to prepare chicken, eh, some veggies, and I need to have some salad or something like that. It's, in that case, you're not going to think a lot of eh, time for this option. This is something very spontaneous. And in that case, when we are using the eh, wheel is when things... um are going to happen in the future, but you are not too sure that they are going to happen in the same way that you are thinking. Cuando utilizamos el will, hay cosas que eh, van a pasar o tal vez no, no estamos 100% seguros de que vayan a suceder. Así como eh, con lo del sándwich, que no ha sido algo eh, pensado, ¿verdad? Cuidadosamente. Así es como nosotros vamos a utilizar el will para cosas como predicciones, como deseos, ideas que nosotros tenemos sobre algunas cosas. But that's it. And in that case, it's not going to have like a, a very, um, or we're not going to take a lot of time. Um, we are going to talk about predictions based on belief. Vamos a hablar de eh, predicciones, pero basadas en nuestras creencias. And I am not talking about something spiritual. I am talking about something that we want to happen. En estas creencias estamos hablando de algo que yo quiero que suceda. Eso es lo que yo quiero que pase y yo creo que va a pasar. Entonces, yo voy a hacer predicciones del futuro con cosas que yo deseo que pasen. I'm sure you will pass the exam. Estoy segura de que vas a pasar el examen. It's something that I want to happen. So that's why it's talking about predictions based on belief. Okay, we have just one minute more to complete this session. So 
In this last minute, I just want to say thank you to you for being in these sessions. Um, I know that it's kind of complicated to, to be in these kind of activities because I know that you have a lot of things to do. You have your work and uh, even you are working um, in this moment. So I just want to uh, say that uh, thanks for coming every night to the sessions. You are doing a very good job. It is a very good uh, thing that you are doing right now. And I hope that you have uh, a lot of uh, good things in your lives. Continue with this process. And I just said that um, good luck for everyone. And I hope you achieve all your goals because you are working for them. So thank you for everything and good luck for the next module. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Thanks thank you, to thank you. you. Thanks thank to you. Thank thanks you. to you. Thanks, teacher. Thank You're welcome. Ojalá nos toque usted otra vez, coach. I don't know. <laughs> we are going to see. We are going to see. Okay. Have a really good night and thank you night, for coach. your time. Nice good to night. meet you, coach. Nice to meet you too. Bye bye. Good night. Bye bye, coach. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night.